Today, you'll learn the basics of texturing in Blender, both how to create accurate textures for your subject and how to fill out an entire environment in a matter of minutes. This is the same system that allows solo artists to create at the same speed as entire studios. By the end of this video, you'll have mastered one of the major disciplines of product animation. So let's get started with texturing. First, we need to understand the two major methods of texturing in 3D and when to use them. You can either create UV textures or procedural textures. UV textures use actual images that are then projected onto the mesh. And because they are actual images from the real world, you often get things like scratches, imperfection, and dust for free without having to spend hours creating them mathematically. Procedural textures are math rather than image based. Blender has a node system built into it that allows you to use math functions as well as pre-built nodes to create whatever textures you want. Today I'll teach you how to use both methods for both close-ups and filling out entire environments. We'll start with how to create image textures for your subject. If you have an object that you want to recreate in 3D, the best thing you can do is take images of it to use as your textures. But you can also find images online if you don't have the object that you want to create or the photography equipment to photograph it. This tutorial is about a pickleball paddle I bought a few Few months ago, so I went ahead and photographed that from all angles and left a link where you can download the pictures in the description so you can follow along. If you want to take these yourself, you're welcome to. You just want to make sure you have flat lighting on the subject to eliminate any light or dark areas. Everything needs to be uniform. If you have harsh shadows, for instance, that'll actually be baked into the 3D texture where you can't edit it or relight it, so you won't have any flexibility with your lighting once it's actually in 3D. So just be careful taking your images. That's why I used my big softbox light as close as I could to the subject to make the largest light source, which eliminates any shadows or light variations. Also, you generally want to have relatively high resolution images for your subject. Uh, the images I provided, I believe that they're 6K. Uh, they don't have to be quite that high resolution, but something like 4K or 1080p is really where you don't want to get any lower than that. So because we're using real images, we save a ton of time adding imperfections. For instance, this black stain that's on the handle of the paddle from my hand and the oils from it after using it for a long time, we get that baked into the model. I would never think to add that in 3D, but that adds to the realism of our model. And we also get all these little imperfections and marks where the ball has come into contact with the face of the paddle when I've been playing in real life. So we don't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff. We get all that for free just by using these actual images. So how do we actually apply these 2D images to a 3D model? Well, it's a lot more simple than you'd think. If we break down the paddle into its fundamental parts, we have three different sections we need to add these UV textures to because the rest are gonna be procedural. We've got the face, the band, and the handle. So let's go ahead and start with the easiest of the three first, the face. The first thing we need is a model. I recommend loading in a profile image of what we're trying to model, which is in this case a paddle. I have a link to an image down in the description you're welcome to use, or you can find your own. And essentially, you're just going to trace that with vertices till you get your main shape. But if you're lazy or you just don't have much time to work on this project, I'll leave a link to a download of the model I made that's untextured so you can still follow along. But I will say if you decide to use my model that I created, Modeling is not my strongest point as a 3D artist, so there are probably some artifacts and janky little things going on with it, but in the end, it works out fine and you can't really tell. So once you have your model, we need to go ahead and quickly set up the add-ons that we're gonna be using throughout the rest of this tutorial. Go to Edit, Preferences, then Add-ons, and search for the Node Wrangler add-on, and make sure that's enabled. Then, while you still have that open, search for the Images as Planes add-on, and click that one as well. The next thing we need to do is open up the shader editor. Then select the object we want to add the textures to, which in this case is the paddle face. And then in the materials tab, hit new to create a new material. Since we have the node wrangler add-on set up, all you need to do is click the principled BSDF node and hit control T. That should bring up an image texture mapping and texture coordinate node all linked together if you enabled everything properly. Just ignore the mapping and texture coordinate node for now. We'll get to those in a little while. Uh, and go ahead and select your image texture node. If you're using the images that I took, the one you wanna use is called Backface. So go ahead and open that up inside the image texture node. If you're using this for a different project or you're just not following along with my images, input whatever image needs to be projected onto that part of the mesh. Once you've done that, you should see the image projected onto the model. 
but it's probably not lining up properly. To fix that, we're going to head into the UV editing workspace. In this workspace, we're able to edit which face of the mesh displays which part of the image, so we can make sure everything lines up properly and it looks like the real life product. In the right window, go ahead and click the material preview mode so you can see what you're working with. Then go ahead and select the object we want to apply the texture to and hit tab to enter into edit mode. The image is not projected properly at all. So to fix that, you want to hit A to select all the vertices on your mesh, U and then Q projection. That's going to map out our image in the shape of the paddle just like we want. But it's still not lined up perfectly. So in the UV editor, you want to search for your image, which in this case is back face. This gives us the guide we need to line up all the vertices properly and make sure it looks like the real life product. Go ahead and rotate, scale, and move your vertices around until your UV map is aligned with your image. And now you're done with the hard part. Now, all we need to do is go back into the shader editor and add a couple of nodes to make this a little bit more realistic. We want to add a bump node. Plug the color from our image texture into the height and the normal output into the principled BSDF normal input. Then I think about 0.1 is the sweet spot for strength, but you can play around with it. Now add a displacement node and plug the color of the image texture into the height. Then plug the displacement output into the material output node. I like to have the scale set to around 0.1 for the specific material. And with that, you're done. So that is the system we're going to use on our other two objects. And it's the same system that's used in all image textures. So now let's learn how to apply the same system to objects that aren't flat. So you can apply this to anything you want and not just 2D planes. To do that, we're going to have to stitch together multiple images to make a seamless texture for our 3D object, but it's a lot less difficult than it sounds. I went ahead and compiled all the textures that you'll need into one image to make things a little bit easier. Now you get to apply all the techniques that you've just learned to this new object. So you'll take the image named 6.0 handles and do the exact same process to the handle of the paddle that we did with the face of the paddle. Opening up the shader editor, loading in 6.0 handles as the image, and then opening up the UV editor. Next, we're going to project the image onto the mesh just like we did with the paddle face. As with anything in Blender, you can do this about a thousand different ways, but this is the easiest way I've found to align the UVs. First, select your handle, then hit tab to enter edit mode, and hit A to select all the vertices. Then hit U to bring up the unwrap menu and press Smart UV Project. Next, you need to select each UV group and align them to the image. Make sure you have your image loaded into the UV editor so you can see what you're working with and then just spend some time making sure they roughly match. It doesn't have to be perfect yet. This can be tedious, but it's not very technical. So just put on some good music and spend some time lining up your UVs and making sure they match. If you did everything right, you'll still end up with these little lines that are marking the seam points of your image but we're about to fix that. To make it seamless, go over to the Texture Paint workspace, and we're gonna use a combination of Smear, Soften, and Clone to make these edges invisible. This is an intuitive process that takes a little bit of time, but once you're done, you're through texturing your model. Now you can add your finishing touches, like a bump node or displacement node, to add that extra little bit of realism. Now that you've finished texturing the paddle face and the handle, the band should be easy. So I'm gonna skip it for now, and teach you how to make shots like this. With what you just learned, you can make a lot of stereotypical product animation shots like this. That's awesome, and they have their place. But if you want to really diversify your portfolio and make one that stands out, you need to understand how to create environments. And the cornerstone of environments is texturing. This is something I learned from Ian Hubert, a veteran 3D artist of over 20 years. To prove it, this forest is made up of these trees. And to quote Ian, most complex stuff can be abstracted if you get the form and texture anywhere close to right. So how do we make realistic textures while still being super fast? You can click right here to watch it or subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out.